So uh, the mother load needs repairs, and you're you're uh, embarking on a 501c3 to, uh, capital campaign to raise money to help with that. Yeah, that's correct. We I was a member of the board oh, about four years ago for six years, and I I didn't feel like we were you know raising money and doing the things we needed to do to keep the the um, mother lo looking good and going and um, so I resigned from the board and I thought about it for four years and decided that. We needed to have a Friends of the Mother Load. Just the symphony has a Friends of the Symphony. We have a, we're going to have a Friends of the Mother Load. Right. We're going to, uh, I've been advised by people who run foundations to have our own 501c3 so that we can ha have control of the money that we raise. People around town that they'll help me, you know, contact their contacts and we should be able to put a dent in it. I think the mother load probably needs to raise about three and a half million dollars. Um, they need a new roof with the with the URA might be responsible for that and do that, uh, and that I'm not sure of. And they do matching funds, but if we don't have it, we better raise it because we need to fix the roof. The orphan girl needs help. They need. Uh, um, an elevator, some kind of an elevator to get children that are handicapped in there. Uh, it needs new carpet, it needs uh, new paint, and I've arranged for some paint already as a donation. Uh, it needs a new lift. Last year we bought, they bought a lift for the interior to get uh, people in wheelchairs up the stairs, but the lift that's on the outside of the building isn't up to code. It needs to be on the inside of the building. So that part has to be excavated in some way um, so that the lift can be inside. And the lift is old and needs to be replaced. And we have a structural engineer that's coming on Thursday. And they, the company that's interested in that is interested in helping us pay for it. Um, it'll be some kind of a donation. I don't know if it's a full donation, but the lift with the construction probably is around $160,000. And um, the roof is two hundred fifty, three hundred fifty thousand, something like that. I think the lobby needs to be renovated so that the back part of the lobby when you walk in is where the desk is so that there's more space for people to work and to buy tickets. And then when we have uh, venues there, we can have um, a bar and a, a snack place, you know, that people can buy things. And then the offices can be off to the lift and, you know, clean that up, put some, um, maybe a couple little uh, refrigerators so that, you know, we can keep things cold and sell things. Um, you know, the upstairs need some renovation and painting, and uh, if we had an elevator, you know, for handicapped children, the theater could, the children's theater could use the upstairs rooms. There's huge rooms upstairs, you know, for practice and having, you know, uh, gatherings for children, but they need uh, a new staircase that needs to be cut in, and it's coded for for children, you know, a handrail, and it isn't really that safe for children. And um, so there's just a lot that needs to be done. You know, paint it up, clean it up. The most important thing after the lift is put in is to put in a new electrical system. So we have to hire an electrical engineer to map out what needs to be done and how we can re-electrify the, the theater. I don't really know what year the theater was built in, but it's probably, a lot of it is probably the same electrical wires. Some has been upgraded, but it's never been tagged, you know, so you know where this wire ends up. So all of that has to be changed out. And we're working with uh, the 501c3, we'll work with Brian Doherty, who is the, uh, uh, the fire chief that is, you know, working with us. And, um, and we'll find an electrical engineer and go from there on, on the electrical. But that's the most important thing right now is the electric.
and that was we were told about four and a half years ago that we had to get that done you know the fire chief and we need to do it, it needs to be done you have to go to the community and, and ask for monies hoping that people will be interested in giving us a lot of money and um, get some grants we have uh, a couple of people that write grants or grant writers for the city that are helping us out we haven't had a grant yet but they're working on it um, hopefully we'll get some of those and and then we'll go to B corporations and you know we can do GoFundMe I don't know if that would be very successful people that are interested in historic theaters might be interested in chipping in some money too it seems that the building has importance beyond uh, Butte city limits it's a kind of a state treasure and really a it national is. treasure really it is a national treasure I'm sure it's on the National Historic um, Registry and um, I think people come from the region to use it you know the dance theaters and we need more venues there you know and there's plenty of those um, I notice in Missoula they have almost every week they have somebody new in in their amphitheater that they just built and the Wilma always is crowded and has lots of uh, entertainers coming through and I would think that you know with the right approach we could get more people in there but that's up to the board you know that is that our main goal is to raise money for the theater I love the theater it's a shining star in our town you know it brings these wonderful plays which are just you know, out of New York and then every year we get one out of Montana Rip what comes out of the University of Montana which is always very good and then we have a symphony that performs four times each year and it's as good a small symphony as I've ever seen and I'm a fan of symphony anyway but um, they just do a great job and it's beautiful it's just unsurpassed I mean you can go to Los Angeles you know there's probably 80 people on the stage but we have 30 people on the stage that creates quite a bit of delight mm -hmm. and um, and then we have one of the oldest community concerts in the nation it was started back when the Copper Kings were coming here and they were coming from big cities New York and and then they brought their families out to Montana and, and lived in Butte and they wanted entertainment so they started bringing uh, entertainment from big cities and that was the beginning of the community concert and so we have one of the oldest ones in the nation and we get five uh, programs each year and they're spectacular 